On Tuesday, we talked with Nebraska Department of Agriculture Director Greg Ibaugh. Greg and representatives from Nebraska's pork, beef, and wheat industries recently returned from South Korea, where free trade agreement implementation began on March 15th. We started by asking how that would change ag trade from the U.S. and Nebraska. Well, the CHORUS agreement, the free trade agreement with South Korea, was something that agriculture was very interested in and pushed very hard for. Uh, a lot of our agricultural commodities, corn, soybeans, wheat, the tariffs uh, went to zero with the implementation of the trade agreement. Um, pork and beef uh, benefit as well, pork uh, more rapidly. Their tariff basically halves and then halves again until it's zero in about two years. Beef is a slower uh, phase out. We uh, will get some uh, uh, relief uh, up front, but then it's incremental over the next um, you know, 10 years, I believe, if I'm right, uh, remembering correctly, that it gets to zero. And that's mainly because beef was the controversial item in the discussions. The beef producers in South Korea wanted to protect uh, their market mm -hmm. and their access to the market and eliminate the competition. And so they were a little bit sensitive towards how beef was treated in the agreement. So the question is probably with the tariffs being eliminated, are they in a position to buy? They're already a ex an exporter, but they're probably down on the list five or six in most areas. So are they now in a position that they want to buy from the U.S.? I think they're considered to be our fifth largest trading partner. And uh, yes, they, they are uh, doing very well. They have positive GDP growth mm -hmm. in Korea really didn't uh, suffer too much from the economic crisis that much of the world uh, suffered from, just like all of Asia. And uh, they're willing to buy. They utilize export enhancement programs uh, that USDA and our federal government um, um, offers them. Mm -hmm. And so they're aggressive purchasers. And so you went with a lot of farmers from Nebraska, wheat growers, corn growers, uh, cattle livestock, uh, cattle growers. Um, why are the people in Korea interested in going to these people for their product? Why are they interested in going to the U.S. and to Nebraska? Well, I think we have a, a great reputation in the United States as far as providing high quality uh, and giving them what they want at an attractive price. We're uh, located well for them. Uh, when we ship out of uh, Seattle and Portland, we have great accessibility to Korea as compared to some of our competitors that would be farther away, especially South right. America. And so, uh, you know, th th there's some advantage there. And so part of why we want to be there is Nebraska is we want to talk about Nebraska and especially in our meats, uh, pork and beef, because they can identify fairly readily that uh, you know a shipment from a plant in Nebraska is Nebraska pork or beef and so I think we can create some competitive advantage by marketing ourselves and providing them with the plant numbers of the companies that have uh, plants in Nebraska and we can let them know which Tyson plant, which Swift plant, which XL plant is actually in Nebraska. So the traceability back to Nebraska is important for them. Yeah. What was the general consensus from the farmers that were there? Were they impressed with the infrastructure that it, that it was allowable to get product into the country? Well, I, you know, I think it was an educational process. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know, we had representatives from Farm Bureau, uh, the Beef Council, pork producers, and uh, Nebraska Wheat Board. And so they were able to see and hear what the market conditions were, what some of the preferences of the Korean importers are as far as, as cuts and, and what type of wheat they, they look for. And then we can kind of see how Nebraska fits into that, uh, that picture. And so and I think it was just a great uh, informational time, time for us to talk a little bit about Nebraska, get Nebraska out there. And then, you know, I think part of it is we have to come back home now and work together to develop a strategy to, to be able to make a difference for Nebraska in the marketplace. Right, that's probably the next question for farmers watching at home saying, how does this affect me as an individual farmer? What's the answer there? Well, I think that, uh, you know, as a livestock producer especially, with that traceability mm -hmm. in there, because uh, we don't really have that traceability in grains. They're still bulk and they're commodities. We know about how many, what percent of grains come out of Nebraska and go to the export markets, especially in the Pacific Northwest, but we can't say that kernel of corn is ours necessarily. Right. Right. But uh, in meats, it's different. You can do that. 
So if we start talking about, you know, why our producers are different, we're family farms, we have different types of genetics. Is that in, important to them, family farms yes, over there? Yes, yeah. that's important all over right. the world now. Uh, and, you know, 99% of Nebraska farms and ranches are family farms and ranches. And so we start talking about some of those things. I think we can, we can build some demand. And then, um, you know, that makes our uh, livestock industry stronger and uh, make sure that, you know, if we are looking at lower cattle numbers, U.S., you know, there's some talk that maybe there'll be a plant that isn't able to survive it. We don't want that plant to be in Nebraska. We want to keep our industry here in Nebraska. And so we're, by building that demand, hopefully we, you know, keep our staying power in the market there. And, uh, you know, that's, that, that's what we want to do. And in the, at the end of the day, we're feeding those livestock corn and soybeans. And so we're value adding to those commodity crops we grow here as well. So fresh off your trip to Seoul, now the department will be traveling to Singapore. Tell me a little bit about that trip. Well, Stan Garbitz is going to uh, go back to Singapore next week and he is going to be at a uh, food show there. And he's going. we're gonna be part of USMEF's uh, pavilion and we're going to have a Nebraska beef and uh, beef and pork booth. The beef council is, is basically carrying the expense, but we'll answer pork questions if we're asked about pork. And we're going to talk about Nebraska. We're going to hand out cards that have our, our plants. USDA has a special number that identifies each plant. So even though it's a Tyson plant, uh, we know that uh, our buyers can know that 245C is Sioux City and uh, 245L is the Lexington plant, mm -hmm. and so if they want to uh, you know, say, I want it out of that plant number, they can know that they're getting that traceability. And so we're gonna, we're gonna try to drive the demand for Nebraska beef products. Will Stan be cooking at the show? Well, I think is that-, that to be the, determined? Well, no, Stan is, uh, yes, we'll, we'll be able to sample product if, if some of the buyers are interested right. in that. One of our packing plants is supplying some product as part of being in USMEF's pavilion, USMEF will have a, uh, some personnel that can prepare the beef for Stan, even though I think he would be quite capable himself. <laughs> As Greg said, South Korea was Nebraska's fifth largest trade partner in 2011 with imports of $331 million. The U.S. International Trade Commission estimates an increase in U.S. agricultural sales to South Korea of $1.9 to $3.8 billion once the trade agreement is fully implemented.